Hello and welcome. I'm Father Jamie Mathias, pastor of Holy Family Catholic Church in Austin, Texas. And we're kicking off a course on how to play the guitar during mass. So glad that you can join us. This is the first of various videos that we'll be publishing and learning to play the guitar together. So let's jump in. The guitar, of course, is a fabulous, simple instrument, one that we can carry around with us, one that we can play at mass, but also we can play around the campfire. We can serenade our beloved. So the guitar is a tremendous instrument for us to learn, not a tremendously difficult instrument. So let's uh, see what we can learn about the guitar. First of all, I just want to thank you for your interest in learning as part of this series. It's a ministry for us here in the church to have musicians. We refer to it as music ministry. Musicians accompany those who are singing during the liturgies and have an important ministry of helping to sustain the song. And so when we come to mass, it's not like we're coming to a concert. Instead, those who play instruments like the guitar, the piano, the organ, they accompany the assembly. I always like to say that you can tell a good guitarist or pianist or organist during the mass if it's one who helps people to sing if it's like a concert where people are just coming and listening then that's not good liturgical music according to the theology of the second vatican council the second vatican council encouraged the full active conscious participation of the laity in the liturgy and so musicians have a tremendous ministry of helping the people of god to sing I just want to begin with a quick warning, and that is don't get discouraged. Anytime that we're learning anything new, that process of learning has its ups and downs. Some things will be easier to learn than others. Frankly, some things are just going to take a bit of practice. But as we always say, practice makes perfect, or in Spanish, la práctica hace el maestro. So by practicing, we become better and better and better, ideally, every time we find ourselves practicing. And so learning the guitar is like learning anything else in life, whether that's learning a new language or learning a sport or learning a martial art, right? We won't play the guitar perfectly overnight, but every hour of practice gets us closer to the goal. Malcolm Gladwell refers to the goal, he, he refers to the 10,000 hour rule that in order for us to perfect anything like the learning of a new language, you'll have to dedicate some 10,000 hours to it. So maybe that might apply to guitar as well. For you to be a tremendous, tremendous guitarist, maybe you'll have to spend some 10,000 hours practicing over and over and over again. But the great thing about the guitar, as you'll notice, is once we start learning certain techniques, we'll just be able to practice those techniques. And then when you find yourself at home or wherever you find yourself with a bit of time, you can just practice those techniques, how to strum, how to make certain chords, how to transition between chords. So don't get discouraged. We're going to do this together. There, of course, will be times when you feel like giving up because, for instance, when you're playing the guitar, your hands are going to start to hurt because when you make chords, you hold your hands in certain ways that you're not accustomed to holding your hands. Or when you're strumming the guitar, if you're using your fingers, they're going to hurt at first. But all of that pain is simply an indication that our body is becoming stronger as a result of that. So. There are going to be ups and downs as part of this. There are going to be times when you don't feel like practicing at all. So I simply would encourage you up front to do those things that keep you going. For instance, you might want to look for fun songs, interesting songs that you enjoy playing, and then you just keep setting goals for yourself. You know, today during this these 30 minutes that I have or during this hour that I have, I'm going to practice this or that technique so that by the end of that time of practicing, you'll see how it is that you've advanced in those techniques. A quick note about fingernails and calluses. You'll notice that guitar players don't have long fingernails because when you're trying to press down on those wire strings, to press those wire strings against the frets of the guitar, that uh, the, the nails can get in the way. And so you might think about that. If you love long nails, then playing the guitar may be a challenge, uh, may not be for you. Calluses too, a note on calluses. Calluses are uh, when you start pressing your fingers into the wires, into the wire strings, what you're going to notice is that your fingers 
begin to ache a little, they, they, they hurt. And that's because you're developing calluses. Now, calluses disappear within a month or so. So once you take up the guitar, so long as you keep playing the guitar, you'll have calluses on your fingers, but the body naturally uh, reduces those calluses. So if you were not, if you were to set aside the guitar for a month or so, those calluses would disappear. If the calluses or the forming of calluses bothers you, there are a few tips here on this screen. Uh, online, there are various tips like using rubbing alcohol three or four times a day to swab your fingers, to soak your fingers in apple cider vinegar for 30 seconds a day. Also, if you play with wet fingers, that'll be a little difficult as well and will impede the, uh, the growth of calluses on your fingers. I just also want to encourage you that you're watching this video with some tips on how to play the guitar, particularly at mass, but there are all sorts of videos online. So whatever keywords you might think of, whatever you're interested in at the moment, don't be bashful about, about looking for other videos and other online resources to continue to learn outside of this series of videos. This series of videos will be fun and great. It'll be for those who want to learn to play the guitar at mass, but maybe your interest one day will be to learn a certain song or to learn a certain technique. So I invite you also to take advantage of all of the videos and resources that you'll find online for playing the guitar. So the first question is, what do you need in order to play the guitar? The first thing, of course, that you'll need is a guitar. So there are various guitars, and I simply want to point out how it is that, uh, for instance, what we'll be using is a, an acoustic guitar, which is a guitar like this, a non-electric guitar. You could, of course, choose to learn the electric guitar as well, but here at Holy Family, we're going to be learning with six-string acoustic guitars. When you buy a guitar, note that there are right-handed guitars or left-handed guitars. You'll always want to make sure that you buy one that is appropriate for you. The dominant hand, if you're right-handed like I, the dominant hand will do the strumming on the strings, and you want to make sure that the, that the guard is always below the strings, such that if you were left-handed, you would be strumming with the other hand, and the guard would be on the other side of the guitar. So there is a difference between right-handed and left-handed guitars. With the two hands that you have then, your dominant hand will do the strumming on the guitar, and your non-dominant hand if you're right-handed, that would be your left hand. Your left hand is going to make the, the chords on the strings. We also just want to note that there are different sizes of guitars. And so if you are a, a bit uh, smaller, if you're a child, or uh, if, uh, uh, if this guitar seems large for you, there are guitars come in all sorts of sizes. So you shouldn't be bashful about finding a guitar that is right for you. And so when you hold the guitar, the fret guard, which is what we find right here, is below the string. So if you're right-handed, you want to make sure that, it, that the fret guard is below. If you're left-handed, you want to make sure that you buy a guitar with the fret guard on the other side. Of course, uh, a left-handed guitar will be, will be strung differently as well. That is to say, the first through the sixth strings here will be reversed on a left-handed guitar. But we'll notice is that when you hold the guitar then with the fret guard at the bottom, the thickest string is going to be at the top of the neck, the thickest string. And then the thinnest, that's, that'll be the lowest pitched string. And then at the other side, that's referred to as the sixth string of the guitar. The highest pitched one is on the other side closest to the fret guard. So the highest pitched one and the lowest pitched one, what you'll see is that way when we strum, then when you strum from the top to bottom, we'll be strumming from the thickest string on down to the thinnest string. Other things that you might want to think about buying or asking for from Santa while you're asking for a guitar, guitar tuners, and we'll learn how to tune a guitar, but a guitar tuner is simply a device. You could also download an app for this it's a device that measures the frequency. So what's the difference between a low note and a high note? It has everything to do with the frequency of that sound. Low notes have a lower frequency and higher notes have a higher frequency. And so what we want to do is we want to make sure that our guitars are tuned. If there's more than one guitar playing at a time, you want to make sure that they are tuned to one another. 
And even when you play the guitar, there are six strings on it. So those strings have to be in tune with one another. How do we make sure that they're in tune? You could tune it by ear, or it's easiest for beginners simply to have a guitar tuner, whether that's a device that you buy or whether that's an app that you download. We'll come to guitar tuning in a bit. Another thing that you'll want is a guitar pick. Guitar picks are plectrums. They're used to provide a louder sound when strumming the guitar. So our, it's one thing to strum with your finger, but our fingers have all sorts of padding on them, which is why we use picks. You can buy all sorts of guitar picks. They are inexpensive, but you'll likely want a guitar pick as you're practicing. Other things you'll probably want to think about investing in would be a guitar strap, a guitar strap holds the guitar over your shoulder so that you can play while standing up. It's one thing to play while seated, but typically when we're playing during mass, we don't see guitarists seated typically and playing during the mass. Instead, you'll see guitarists wearing a strap that holds the guitar to them so that they can strum and sing while standing. Another thing that you'll want to think about investing in is a capo. A capo is a, a handheld device that clamps all the strings on the fretboard at once. And so what you'll notice is with this device then, that it, it goes under the strings, and we'll see in a later lesson how to use this, the capo goes under and then it'll be dampening all of the strings at the same time so that uh, we can use this instrument to be able to raise the pitch of whatever it is that we're playing. And finally, the last thing that you might want to consider investing in is a guitar stand. A guitar stand will hold your guitar upright. There are all sorts of guitar stands out there. If you're thinking that, for instance, of playing during the mass, you might want to think about investing in one that's highly mobile, one that you might uh, be bringing, bringing back and forth, for instance, to church. There's one thing that's not on this list, and that's because it may or may not come with a guitar, and that's a guitar case. A guitar case is going to help you to protect that guitar when you're transporting it. Uh, when you're not playing it, you could either put it into its case or you could set it upright in a guitar stand. Here we have some guitar vocabulary. So that as we look at the guitar, we start to learn the various names of the parts of the guitar. At the very top of this screen, you see how it is the, the guitar is essentially divided into two principal parts, the body of the guitar, which is this part down here, and the neck of the guitar, which extends upward, the body and the neck. You see the fretboard and the headstock. The fretboard is comprised of all of these lines that run along the strings, the fretboard. So each one of these is a fret the first fret, the second fret, the third fret. So we have the fret board that contains all of those. The headstock is this piece at the top then that helps us to, essentially the strings are attached at the bottom of the guitar and then they come up here to the neck of the guitar. The head, the headstock at the top of the neck is where the, the strings come and are fastened. At the very top of the guitar then we see the machine heads which are these, when we learn to tune the guitar, we'll be turning these to be able to make the pitch go higher or lower. The nut is what separates the part of the string that goes to the machine heads from the part on which we play. So the nut is this part of the guitar right here. So when we play, we're playing here on the fretboard below the nut. We never are playing up here. We're playing below the nut. The frets then, we talked about, every one of these lines divides a fret. So when we start forming chords, for instance, we're putting our fingers into different frets, on different strings in different frets. On the back of the guitar, we see the heel. The heel then is this piece that comes off that connects the neck to the body. The bottom deck is the bottom of the guitar. The body sides the side of the guitar, and the top of the guitar is, is the soundboard. So the soundboard on the top, the body sides on the side, and the bottom deck. The sound hole is the hole that's in the middle of the guitar. So what happens is that the guitar amplifies this sound by the strings being over a hole. 
And so the sound hole is an important part, uh, an important part of the guitar. After that, on this diagram, we see the strings. This is a six string guitar. They're guitars with other numbers of strings. For instance, you might hear of people playing a 12 string guitar. This is a six string guitar. And so you'll see the six strings here. The saddle or the bridge nut. So we remember that at the top of the guitar was the nut. And on the other side as well, toward the bottom of the guitar, there's another nut, which we refer to as the bridge nut or the saddle. So all the sound that a string makes is between the bridge nut and the nut, the saddle and the nut, the nut and the saddle. That's where these strings are making the noise. It's below the bridge nut and above the nut that the strings are fastened. And so we're not playing on those parts of the strings. And finally, the bridge. Every guitar then has the bridge, which is this piece that's mounted on the soundboard, to which you'll see that the strings are attached. A bit of vocabulary then on the guitar. So tune in to our next video to learn how to tune the guitar. Tune in and we'll learn to tune. <laughs>